Hi, friends. Guess what just arrived in the mail? The new Natasha Denona, Mini Biba, and Roshi Duo. As I was teaching my Flex Express 30 minute class, if you wanna join in, just sign up for my newsletter down below. The UPS man came, I knew it was in the box, and I have another class to teach later, so I thought, why don't I just turn on the camera, get a first impressions down, and go through some swatches. We're gonna do a look, of course. But if it's your first time here, hi. I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, so you can head over to my Instagram. Now, Natasha's original Biba palette dropped in March of 2019. And this was one of the most highly anticipated palettes from Natasha as it was all neutral, just beautiful shades from warm to plum warm and to cool and now we have the new mini biba which funny enough upon first glance if retro came out first this to me looked like a mini retro but if you see the original mini retro it had the khaki or I would say moss green tones, but then Natasha decided to expand upon that mauve color and then we got <laughs> the midi retro. The Biba palette, upon seeing it, I just knew that she based the mini Biba story on Rayon. I think this entire row, I try to look for some Instagram video or YouTube video where Natasha likes to describe her inspiration as to why she did what she did with minis and midis in terms of color expansion. I'm afraid I did not find any details, but let me know down below if you encountered any. Rayon, when I saw this color I knew just from the arrangement in the mini Biba that that's what she was inspired to do to expand upon that like rusty plum shade and actually let me get on the website and why don't I drop some product details while I'm at it the mini Biba retails for $25 and the rose cheek duo retails for $19 currently now available on natashadanona.com as well as Sephora I imagine it will soon be available on Beautylish as well inspired by our best-selling everyday essential 15 pan Biba eyeshadow palette extending the concept of an all neutral palette the shade extension features five brand new nude and brown shades with neutral rosy undertones it's like a brown rose definitely that's what rayon is giving me some additional product details we're looking at a suggested shelf month of what does that say 24 months and this palette is made in Italy. And the Rose Cheek Duo has just an 18 month suggested shelf life and also made in Italy. All right, with product details out the way, just a quick note about the packaging. The base of the palette takes on this beautiful matte lilac hue, which you find in the original Biba palette. It has that matte finish, which I absolutely adore. And that is a reoccurring theme when going from 15 pan palette to mini or vice versa, that usually the base of the palette resembles the just the overall palette color and design. It looks like we have one cream to matte shade here. Well, you know what? Let me get going. Oh, Bruno, that's the first name of the shade I love. Let's start with Bruno. A deep mahogany brown. Izzy, a nude dusty rose. Oh, that's gorgeous. You know how I love my rosy brown, peachy browns. <laughs> Blaze Nude, Metallic Light Rosy Nude, Plush, a Matte Light Medium Dusty Coral. And lastly, we have our Cream to Matte Shade, Wink, a Medium Dusty Coral Brown. So here are the swatches from Mini Biba. I love these shades. Now, I don't know if this will be, again, the dominant color story that takes over 2022 because generally I saw for this year, Rosy Browns was all the rage. Although I consider retro to be more burgundy in hue the mini biba definitely is overall more rosy brown so while i understand that you can definitely take this concept from retro absolutely like patty for instance is a similar going shade gogo -Go has a a similar feel as well 
I, I think it aligns very well with the middle row found here in the original Biba palette, just like those coral brown shades that are warm, but that rosy tone, I think, just gives it an extra element. You know, something else to work with than the usual terracotta browns. For the rose cheek duo, my apologies, I immediately saw that the cream blush shade looked very similar to the one that exists in the light glam face palette. I do not have that palette. Still, I'm gonna let you finish. Guess what just came in the mail, fam? The Natasha Denona team sent some PR and it did include the light glam face palette. I'll interrupt myself briefly just to show you some comparison swatches between this and the new mini Rose Cheek Duo. Rose Cheek Duo Cream Blush. Rose Cheek Duo Star Glow Highlighter. Glam Palette Light Cheek Blush. Glam Palette Light Star Glow. Ooh, the Star Glow has a little more shine. Picking up more from the Cheek Duo just so you can see a better comparison. It looks like the mini cheek rose hue is leaning more pink rose, whereas the glam face palette is leaning a little more peach. I put on my glam cord just so you can see the colors a bit better here. And while we're at it, why don't we check out the glam face palette dark? The cream cheek blush from dark, the star glow highlighter from the dark palette. This has a little more pink. This is like a little more Champagne pink, definitely a lot more gold leaning. What's the difference when they're applied on the face? For context, I apply the Auric Glow Lust in Sunstone with the RCMA five part foundation palette in Shinto and I lightly set with the Pat McGrath loose powder in light medium too. On this side we have the rose cheek duo and let's check out the glam face palette light. I don't know if you can tell but I do detect a little more peachy warmth from the glam face palette light versus more of a rose pink on this side. And why don't we apply this highlighter, shall we? Rose Cheek Mini Duo Star Glow Highlighter, Glam Face in Light. I'm getting more shine from the star powder in the Glam Face palette. And this is starting to hard pan on me a little bit. I don't know if I have to maybe scrape off the surface. It could have been maybe there was something on my fingers and it disrupted the formula, creating that hard pan feel on the highlighter. Both are very similar, but I think in person you can definitely see there is a stronger pinky rosier hue coming from the Rose Cheek Duo versus the more peachy hue from the Glam Face Palette Light. Now the shadows, when I was swatching this in the the video that will return momentarily. I thought the shades were similar to what's found in the Glam Face Palette, but it looks to be that the Glam Face Palette has softer brown hues and the ones found in the Mini Biba Palette leans heavier coral peachy brown. Transition shade, crease shade, smoke shade, inner corner, outer corner. From Mini Biba, the medium matte shade, lighter peachier shade, mahogany shade, cream to powder shade, and the metallic. Here is the Glam Face Palette Light and here is Mini Biba. So they are similar overall. I think you can detect that the Mini Biba holds more of a coral feel in this palette. Applying Glam Face Light on this side, applying Mini Biba on this side. Here are close-up shots of the Mini Biba and Rose Cheek Duo. Other, we have the Glam Face Palette in Light for the eyes and cheeks. Now, post-filming the first part of this video, I immediately thought of Pat Venus in Fleur because when I did this look, I thought, oh, this actually gave me something similar. So why don't I swatch, what is this called? After Dusk. So here's After Dusk, but you can see that this has a little more brown in it, whereas After Dusk, a lot more plum. But this is the shade that I just absolutely love, is Twilight Bronze. Now the advantage Venus in Fleur has over Mini Biba is this beautiful bronze metallic shade that my goodness, just all over the lid, stupendous. But the advantage Mini Biba has are more mattes as opposed to metallics. However, Venus in Flores has the Rose Fire Nectar. Yes. This shade is absolutely gorgeous. It can be applied on its own or on top of Twilight Bronze or Moonlight Lies On. This could be the highlighter shade of choice or lid shade of choice. But I think overall, Mini Biba leans more coral brown. And 
you know, it really all depends on the look you want to achieve. This definitely, Mini Biba is gonna give you more smoke. As you see here from the light palette, I consider myself to be like medium tannish right now. So the smoke shade, when built up, gives me a little bit of intensity, which I think daily friendly for sure. But if I want a little more punch, then Bruno from Mini Biba is going to give me the smoke I need. And if the swatch for you is really dry and patchy, it is. And I do say... Sorry, could you say that again? My apologies. I'm not talking to you. I thought Bruno blended better than how it swatched, but, but in terms of which one to get, or if you already have the Glam Face Palette Light, it really depends on how you want to go. So if you prefer the colors that exist in Rose Cheek Duo, then just get the Rose Cheek Duo and skip Mini Biba. But if you prefer the more peachy coral hues from Mini Biba, then just get that and have that as a supplement to the shadows that exist here in the Glam Face Palette. As far as the cheek products, you know, when I wore Rose Cheek Duo for the rest of the day after I filmed the first part of this video, I really like the pinkiness that the rose color delivers. The peach is okay, it's very light. You know, I do love the highlighter. It does have like an icier look to it. I can't decipher if, I think the Rose Cheek Duo has maybe a little more pink in there. I have not decided which I love more. So my apologies, I just wanted to hop on here and interrupt myself to quickly give you these comparisons because at the time I did not have the Glam Face Palette Light, now I do. I didn't necessarily want to do a separate video, but if you do want a dedicated video going through Venus in Fleurs and Mini Biba, Mini Glam Face Light, maybe even the middle row in the all neutral Big Mama Biba Palette, let me know. But in the meanwhile, Let's give the video back to Alicia. Introducing Endy's new mini size cheek duo, including two brand new, brand new shades of her iconic cream blush and highlighter. Formula suitable for every skin tone. Oh, here we go. Every, every skin tone, Natasha, considering that the rose is pretty. It's pretty light, but we'll we'll keep going. Cream blush, a rich and creamy texture in a universal pink shade that gives cheeks a flush of color. Super Glow Highlighter, the award-winning intense powder highlighter that gives you the ultimate 3D glass-like glow. Formulated with a unique, silky, soft formula made out of milled chroma crystals and luxurious crushed pearls. The cream blush is a featherweight, buildable, long-lasting formula with a brightly pigmented yet silky skin in quotes finish. There's no oil sensation, an ultra light ester emollient for an extremely smooth and velvety texture. This very much feels like the formula that exists in the Glam Face Palette, not like what's in her four pan face palette. I have to say though, I really wanted to see a Biba inspired four pan face palette from Natasha. Who knows, maybe she'll still go with that, but listen, to have those rosy coral browns exist as cheek products, I know they kind of exist with the glam palette, I get it. Like this color here is in the realm of that hue. I just wanted like a whole cheek. I know, I'm being selfish. Shut up, Alicia. I have to apply some face makeup. Excuse me. That's better. Those were the fastest eyebrows I've ever drawn in my entire life. With all the details and swatches out the way, why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. Why don't we start off with the mini cheek duo? I'm highly anticipating to see how this shows. This is again the rose shade cream finish. It has a texture again very much like what exists in the Glam Face Palette. Oh that's pretty. But again I don't know how this will translate on someone who is much deeper than me. Will it still look somewhat pink or will it look ashy? Still need a little more blending, excuse me. And this is what it's doing. Now, if you have drier skin, I would highly recommend that you apply this cream blush on a more emollient surface, right? So it doesn't look dry. But the consistency of this cream blush it does dry down to more of like a a soft matte finish, especially when you blend it on. If you are oily, however, I would highly recommend that you powder first. 
I'm going in with Pat's Loose Powder in light medium. And I want to see then what will happen if I apply this on a powdered surface. I think that's actually much better. If you want to ensure longevity from this product, maybe to get a little more color punch, then you would powder first and then apply this after. I love the Pat McGrath Loose Powder. I know it was not a favorite with many, but I think it very light in texture and suitable enough to apply a cream product over it without it looking patchy or uneven. I'm going in with another dose of the cream product. I think this is fairly easy to apply with the fingers. And dare I say, I'm actually really liking this over the Love Cheek Duo, which funny enough, I just presented this as a favorite for 2021. But you see here, that's definitely more of a cooler pink, whereas the pink from the Rose Cheek Mini definitely has more of a rose to it is it leans more warm which is nice to see but this color is very like i'm very feeling very fresh and springy let's now apply this highlighter <sighs> hello brushes taking my kyoredo small cheek brush here just pouncing on that star glow well, that's pretty. I just put my glam core on just so you can see what's going on here. It is very shiny, very shiny. Now, my apologies, I don't have her other mini cheek palettes, but I do appreciate that she has her cream cheek formula in the minis. I think this is a great size to go. Although limiting, I don't know, again, if it's truly truly universal if you are deeper complected please sound off below for our friends so if you have a similar skin tone and you are thinking about it if you are wondering if the rose is going to show up on you as a rose and she has a beautiful model on the campaign that is wearing the uh, new row cheek duo but i don't know i don't know if this was tampered with i don't know those are all the details you decide accordingly i think it's time for us to get into mini biba mini biba also the compact is adorable magnetic closure you i mean the this mirror is small hey but great for the eyes listen if you don't got nothing else maybe you already have your face makeup on and you just have to put some on the eyes you get the eyes done mini biba hmm. i would love to try this cream to powder shade wink it is the coral brown. You know I just love the sound of that. Taking my Tonsido brush, it is a Kolinsky brush that works very well with cream, liquid, and pouches. Let me just slap it on the entire eyeball here. Tapping around under the crease. Again, when dealing with these types of textures, it's best to just start applying them on the lid and then when you have it in and around the crease, you can go in with another brush. I'm taking my little BK Beauty 202 brush that was included in the travel set. Because it is a synthetic brush, I think appropriate to use with the cream to matte texture. Oh, I like that. Now with plush, this is more of like that peachy coral shade. I want to just drag it on the very edges of Wink to create more of a, of a gradient here. Going from that rosy coral brown into more of a peachy hue. That was fairly simple to achieve. Taking more of Wink under the lash line as I love to wrap that same shade here under my lash line. You don't have to go that route, but something I love to do. Now, this palette does not have like a lighter brow highlight, which great. So if you're deeper complected, you could use the peacher shades as maybe as a highlight. If you are lighter than me, then you will have to dip out and just use another shade, whether matte, shimmery, or metallic on the brow bone, or something your own skin tone to blend out the edges without adding more color to what's already there. Now, do I wanna stay here? I think I wanna keep this eye as is, but let's take a smaller brush and apply this nude blaze blaze nude i'll take that on the inner corner of the eye the swatch was very shiny 
and it definitely translates the same here. I'm wrapping it from the inner top corner towards the inner lower lash line, feathering it into wink so it could look smoother in that transition. And I actually want to see how the Bruno shade, this one here, fares on the lash line. Taking my little Surat eyeshadow brush, dipping into Bruno and whisking it here on the outer part of my lash line. I do have the burgundy eyeliner on standby as I thought it would be a great pairing to the mini Biba. As it is to retro also, but you can definitely get away with introducing a burgundy tone liner to this look. Well, that's nice. You can definitely see it on top of Wink. It does not disappear completely. I'm just spending some time with the wing because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to that. Although it looks like trash, but it's fine. With my wing goes number four. Dipping into Izzy. Let's see how this fares as a crease shade. I could quickly see that coral brown hue. Although I do think some of Bruno fell into Izzy. That sounds so funny because these are a little powdery, but not unlike what exists with Natasha's creamy matte formula. It's not the cream to powder, but it does have punch. Very similar to here, although I do feel this leans a little more rosy brown, this a little more coral brown. Now we can take Bruno and see how this builds. I'm taking the same number Bow, and I'm just tapping that color on the outer part of the lid. I want to create a nice smoky bracket here and whisk it into Izzy. We're going to start getting that blendy blend. Now I was curious to see how Bruno translates on the eyes because I didn't want it to appear or pass as like a brown, right? Because sometimes with these creamy matte shades, they, they are so creamy that they can darken quite a bit on the skin when blending out. But I think with Izzy and its coral hue, it helps to further amplify this mahogany tone from Bruno in a way that, again, doesn't look brown neutral. I don't know if you can detect that on camera. Hmm. I'm gonna keep it here on the outer part of the lid adding a touch more to whisk out here as I like to do. Taking the same Bruno shade, but just on the outer fourth of the lower lash line here. I wanna keep it tight to this corner. As far as the blend goes, pretty good. There's some inconsistency here that happened on the inner part of my crease. I am using a blue, Yes, it's a blue squirrel brush. Very soft. Probably goat will be better with this type of a matte because it is very creamy and when it does come in contact with the skin, there is a little bit of adherence. So a softer bristled brush, you will just have to work with more. It won't have the same workhorse quality as a Psychoho goat hair or even Sokoho. Now with Blaze Nude, I'm just hitting that right on the lid where there is no shadow. This is this is a shiny shade. I'm happy to say, if you wanted that shine to come forward, it definitely is with Nude Blaze. I'm just carving out here on the inner part of the eye so it can integrate with the Bruno shade. And I'm tapping some Bruno actually over the edges of the Blaze Nude. Nude Blaze, which one is it? So it doesn't look so abrupt. It just has a cleaner transition, yeah? But I am taking this metallic a little higher. I wanna carve it right here. And just to, you know, use this and to introduce another shade, I'm going with the Start Glow Highlighter now on the inner corner of this eye look. Taking my fluffy shader, with Izzy, that first matte we applied here, but on the majority of the lower lash line. I'm gonna give us final blend here. Here are some close and wide shots of the new Mini Biba and Mini Rose Cheek Duo. What can I say? I had a pleasure using these two mini palettes. I think they are consistent with what 
we have already seen considering the fact that there have been inconsistencies with her mini palettes like mini lila not being a great hit mini star being meh. these colors i feel all performed beautifully and very much aligned with at least the middle row now if you already have biba because i know this is like the the one burning question do you necessarily need the mini Biba. Okay, so this is Rayon, and we put it up against the shades from here. You see, it very much looks like Izzy, except this one is a cream to powder, and Izzy is a true powder matte. Let's see here. Pasha. Pasha is a beautiful shade. It definitely has more of like that rusty tone. It doesn't have the same depth as Bruno. That definitely looks more mahogany. But mm, you could argue it kind of looks like wink a little bit. This definitely leans more, it has a little more brown in it and wink has a little more rose. Now here's the thing. Unfortunately, in the big Biba palette, you don't have a shade like Bruno, this deep mahogany shade that can create depth in the same way that stays within the same color story in Mini Biba. The only dark shades you have are Seed, which is far more neutral, is more like a bark brown, and Spot, which is a cream to powder black shadow. I think when you introduce these tones to the more rosy brown, ones it could get a little muddy you could do it do it i rather use something that's still within this color story realm to create more depth you could use cocoa cocoa is definitely more of a a warm brown so if you want it depth but see i think they just look similar you just move to a, another part of the color spectrum it's not necessarily for intensity it's just another type of brown right rosy brown versus neutral brown however if you don't have the biba palette and you swatched it several times you're like you know what i only really like that middle row all the other colors could kick rocks well this is now an opportunity to now have the shades that are inspired by the middle row in the original biba that you don't have but now have in a much smaller offering a lot more digestible i feel like <laughs> than this guy. I would argue the same for the mini cheek duo. This, even though I had admired the fact that it only had two cheek products as opposed to four, again, a lot more digestible, smaller pans, not as much makeup, just right for one person. The verdict is still out about this shade. Again, we'll discuss it down below, but these shades, I think they're just amazing for daily looks. Again, not your typical brown, bronze hues of colors that, yes, very much appropriate to wear during the day, but the mahogany, rosy, coral browns, I just love and will love to see more of, okay? Maybe this is the way we're going for 2022, I don't know. I do think is still very different from the midi retro. If you have this, this still leans very burgundy. So you will get a lot more like of an ox blood red feel from the deeper shades in the midi retro versus mahogany coral brown from mini biba the thing is i do remember some of the shades from the glam face light the shadows being more peachier in tone and that's what i picked up immediately when i saw this the mini cheek duo I do really like. I love the color, it's very subdued. Again, I know I'm not the deepest complected. I am a medium to medium tannish, okay? I wish I was more medium tan, but whatever. Winter time, barely there, flush of rose color. Again, great for every day, really nice to have on the apples of the cheeks. And the highlighter, super smooth. I mean, it looks like I applied a liquid highlighter. I felt the same way about the Star Glow shade and texture in the Glam Face palette, but I do love the fact that this is a little more lightening champagne, so I can top this off the more gold leaning champagne shade from Glam Face Dark. And as I spoke about in my Best of Cheek video, 
I just love to layer highlighters. It makes the cheeks look multidimensional and to have a texture like this that just melts into your skin. I will have no issues layering highlighters and the end result still will just look beautifully skin-like in finish. So that was a very zip through first impression of the new Natasha Denona Mini Biba Eyeshadow Palette and new Rose Cheek Duo. Let me know down below if you're thinking about picking this up. If you have already, have you tinkered with them? What are your thoughts? And I will see you down in the comments. Until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial. Natasha Denona Extravaganza. Monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.